Today, I'm going to be sharing the top things that I wish I would have known before becoming a 3D artist. All that in the video coming up. What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi, and today I'm going to be sharing the top things that I wish I would have known before becoming a 3D artist. I've been doing uh, 3D arts for well over a decade, and I learned a lot of things uh, along the way. And I wanted to just share that insight with you guys, uh, especially if you're a beginner or maybe you're making a career change into the world of uh, 3D art, 3D modeling, uh, 3D animation in general. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So first on the list is that 3D art is hard to learn. Uh, most likely you're an artist that's transitioning over from another art form. And if you're an art, artist mind or artistically minded, uh, jumping over and learning 3D is pretty challenging because you have to push back through or you have to push through that technical barrier which sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming right uh and whether you're self-taught or you're going to school uh you know be ready to struggle and i had a real hard time learning 3d modeling in the beginning it was partly due to my schooling uh, i went to a public uh four-year college and they had a 3d animation program and the intro to uh, 3d animation uh, was a class where we did a lot of storyboarding and then uh, towards the end we actually got into Maya a little bit and we did a cinematic right and the instruction wasn't that great so I really kind of figured it out pretty much on my own just to create a rendering and animatic I had all these nice uh, you know storyboards that I pretty much just bust my ass uh, mainly through my spring break and towards the end of the semester you know I was pumped I wanted to see what all my other students did and I wanted to show off my work and I get to the uh, class, right, to the final uh, lecture and where we're supposed to present, and there was a box on the door. And the box said, you know, drop off your work, enjoy the rest of your summer. And I was pretty bummed because, you know, I, I worked so hard and I wanted to show off my work. And I also wanted to see what uh, my, you know, classmates did. And, you know, that in itself actually got uh, me out of 3D animation, right? It got me to switch over to graphic design. Uh, eventually, I did end up going back and finishing up my uh, animation classes. So I kind of had, you know, two areas of expertise uh, when I got my bachelor's. But, you know, what that taught me was uh, you're going to have to struggle. And no matter how good or how bad your schooling is, you're always going to have to at some point learn on your own. Right. Because 3D, you're always learning. And even if you think if you think you learn or you got to a certain point, there's going to be a new package, a new workflow that you're going to go that you're going to have to adapt to. Age doesn't matter. And the reason I'm touching upon this topic is because I've been getting a lot of uh, emails as I started doing more YouTube about, you know, I'm such and such. I'm in my late 20s, my early 30s, my mid 30s my 40s right and is it too late to start uh you know pursuing a career in video games in vfx or you know just being a 3d artist as a whole and my answer is absolutely not and i say that because uh, i had the same worries when i first started out right i thought i was behind the ball playing behind the eight ball and you know it took me a while to actually graduate so i got a, a traditional bachelor's from a four-year college but it really uh, took me closer to six years to graduate uh, i wasn't fortunate enough to just have um you know a, a full ride so my scholarship uh did so the scholarship that i had uh, paid a partial amount and uh you know my family didn't have enough money just to support me so I had to support myself, right? I had to make up a difference. So I always had to keep a job while going to school. I actually uh, did uh, end up taking some time off as well. I took about two semesters off uh, when my father died. Uh, I was 19 at the time. So I did have, you know, just uh, some drama like we all have in life, uh, difficulties. And, you know, like I said, I had to work all the time. So by the time I graduated with my degree, you know, it took me about six years. And then uh, not only that, to get a job, you know, it actually took me uh, a couple months. 
And if you think you're behind the eight ball as far as time wise, like I said, I've been there, but don't beat yourself up. I think we all have that internal uh, clock in our head that says, hey, by 18, we need to get out of high school. 22, we need to get out of college. 30, we need to have a career and be settled down and married, right? And sometimes life doesn't pan. Choice of software doesn't matter. And what do I mean by that? Well, uh, if you're on YouTube or just really uh, online at all, uh, there's pretty much the long ongoing debates about which software to use, right? And especially when you're first starting out, you might be thinking to yourself, well, the reason I'm not doing that good is because of XYZ software. And, you know, I primarily teach Maya uh, so far, but I'm not a Maya fanboy, right? And people come in my channel and say, hey, you know what? You should be doing this in Blender. You should be doing this in Moto or, you know, 3D Studio Max. And I never put Maya on a pedestal. I always say it's a software. If you can do the same thing in Blender, you know, in uh, Moto, uh, ZBrush, whatever package it is, that's fine, right? Just don't put that much importance uh, because that's what I did, right? Initially, uh, I stressed myself out. I started learning Maya, but I learned a lot of different softwares, right? And I really got to evaluate uh, different, um, you know, softwares for what they are. But at the end of the day, it really just comes back to the art because once you get past that technical barrier, uh, you should be able to switch, you know, from Blender to Maya, Maya to Moto, Moto to 3D Studio Max, right? You already understand the fundamentals. The thing that really takes a long time to learn is just really the fundamentals of 3D art. Once you master that, the software is just a tool and really is just the artwork or the artistic uh, level that you have that's gonna shine and really make your pieces uh, come to life. Multiple job markets. So there are multiple job markets and a lot of us don't think about that and I made a video about passive income. I'll go ahead and link it up here. But the whole point of that video was to show you, hey, you know, we all know that as a 3D artist, we can be a, you know, game artist, or we can work in the VFX industry. And that's fine. And that's, those are really just the ones that are really just sexy appealing. Uh, those The ones that have that mass market appeal, right? Because we all play video games. We all watch movies with great VFX, right? And that's really what's uh, marketed, right? So there's a whole set of other industries besides video games and VFX for movies for 3D artists. And that's why I made the video about passive income, about selling 3D models, uh, to really just shine light on another source of revenue for 3D artists. And I'll go ahead and link it up here on the YouTube card. So there's a huge industry for uh, models, creating models for 3D printing. There's also um, a modeling for uh, VR and AR, uh, mobile gaming. Uh, you also have a simulation, right? Whether it's working for government or, uh, you know, you could actually work for disaster or emergency simulations. And I've uh, worked with such companies creating assets, creating models uh, for those industries. So there's a whole slew that if you start looking and change your mindset and really just looking outside of video games and VFX and maybe you're struggling to get into those industries, you might have luck and actually get work within the ones that I mentioned. It always comes back to the art. And what do I mean by that? Well, no matter how good technically you are, it always does come back to the art because uh, like I mentioned earlier, once you push through that technical barrier of learning, you know, 3D as a whole, um, it really uh, comes back to your art skills. So all that drawing, all that sculpting that you did uh, when you were younger, all that painting, you know, uh, and you might come to 3D and that's what happened to me. I was a pretty good 2D artist. I got to 3D and I like really, really sucked because I didn't have the technical side down. But once I got the technical side down, all those things, just me training my eyes for years, actually helped me a lot, right? And you know, that's why I tell people uh, that ask me, does drawing matter, right? Do I have to know how to draw to be a good 3D artist? And the answer is no, right? And I, at first I had a bias about it because, you know, I knew how to draw. So I figured, hey, well, if I know how to draw, that's definitely a asset. But I think more importantly than just drawing, it's just having a good eye, right? Developing that eye, 
developing that eye as an artist is one of the most important things, right? And however you develop it, it really doesn't matter, right? So maybe you're a sculptor, maybe you're a painter, right? Uh, maybe you do draw. So you do have to have a good eye. And I think that uh, drawing does help develop the eye, but it's not the only thing, right? Next on the list is you got to get paid. And that statement doesn't come from a place of greed. Uh, it really just comes from a place of practicality. Uh, if you're an artist, no matter really what field you're in, if you fail to uh, get a job uh, in a studio or freelance or just really monetize in any shape, way or form uh, on your art, then what's going to happen is eventually you're going to need to get a real job, right? And if you can't make a living as an artist, eventually the bills come and you can no longer rationalize in your head to just keep doing this. And maybe you're doing it as a hobby, but then if you have a job that's taking 40, 50 hours a week or 60, right? Uh, then, you know, that's not, you're not going to be able to put that time in uh, versus just being a full-time artist, right? If that was your career and you're actually uh, getting paid for that, right? So uh, that's something that, you know, you do have to figure out how to get paid uh, one way or the other uh, to be able to become an artist. And the sooner you do that, the more you'll be able to do it, the more improvement you'll do. And ultimately, uh, you'll be happier uh, making a living uh, as uh, the artist that you always wanted to be. The exposure trap. So working as any type of artist or creative at a certain point, you're going to be asked to work for exposure. And you, as not only an artist, but as a businessman, right, or woman, you're going to have to figure out, is this opportunity worth the free work, right? Because essentially that's what it is, right? It's the allure, right? Somebody's going to contact you, most likely, and going to ask you, hey, we have this great opportunity to work for free, and by you working with us, it's going to give you this great exposure that will lead to more clients or more money. Uh, usually, uh, these opportunities are uh, kind of ill-advised to take, especially if somebody's approaching you, because nine times out of ten, it's just uh, companies that have no money and they're targeting a younger artists or uh, maybe artists with not a lot of experience or not a big portfolio and they're just trying to sucker you into uh, free work and there's never going to be uh, really just any payment or really the uh, opportunity for exposure is really not there right uh, so exposure can be hitting uh, can be hidden as you know percentage of sales but they usually don't have any sales so it can be worded a, a little bit different so once our project launches right or we'll give you a cut out of these sales but uh, eventually one shape or the other you're working for free you're doing all the work up front and there's no promise of payment right at any point in time and you know those are the times that you really have to evaluate and now with the internet exposure is really 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 easy to just justify to see to quantify right so if somebody's approaching you and say hey we have this opportunity for you know to work with our company we do such and such and such yada 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 uh then you can follow up and see what kind of exposure does this company have right go on their facebook go on their youtube right go on their instagram right and honestly uh, a major company with lots of exposure probably won't approach you and be asking you to work for free in the first place. Since they're such a big company and have this exposure, they'll go ahead and pay out, uh, you know, a good working wage for the artist to work on that project and not just promise uh, the payment, right, of, of working for exposure. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Please let me know how I did in the comments down below. Make sure to smash that like button. And don't forget to share this with any 3D artists that might find value in the information. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.